Well, I can't say that it hasn't been a while, so let's start off with this one. TrueNAS scale, and we're gonna be installing Plex, as well as having like a Samba share. I don't know, this took me a really long time to figure out, uh, so let's just roll that intro and get into it. <laughs> So at this point, you should have your TrueNAS scale set up. You should have the admin account and your default password for it. We can log in, it shows everything here. And the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is set up a pool. So we can go over to storage. Actually, I'm going to go to system settings, general, and I'm gonna change these to the Nord theme. Yeah, all right, much better. Okay, back at you. So uh, storage, right. So we're gonna go to storage, we're gonna create a pool. We can name this pool, we'll call this one Galaxy. Uh, you know, a little bit further than the cloud, right? Uh, now for this here, you can see that I have an NVMe and I have two hard drives. So I'm gonna pick the two hard drives and I'm gonna add those over and those are gonna be mirrored. So that way I just, I have like a, a mirror backup. So if one of the drives starts failing, it'll notify me and then I can swap the drive out and it'll rebuild itself. So it has, uh, you know, data integrity. We still have this NVMe here. So I'm gonna add a VDEV and I'm gonna add a cache. Now I'm gonna add this one to the cache and that's gonna improve the read performance so that way I'm gonna have like NVMe read performance when editing videos directly off of this uh, as a network drive. We can create this, confirm, and create the pool. So now you can see that we've created our pool, which is called Galaxy. Now the next thing that we wanna do is create a user account. So we can go to credentials and then local users. We can go to add in the top right. We can add a user account. Now for this here, I'm only gonna be using this with uh, like Samba. So in that sense, I can ignore the 16 character long limit and I'm gonna make the password the same as my computer so when I access this network drive it's just going to pair the username and password so this is the same username and password for my computer and it'll just automatically connect uh, without having to type in any credentials or anything now everything else we can leave the same except we're going to add full access to groups and other then we can click Save and our user account is created so now we can go to data sets now we want to create a data set so we're gonna add data set here this is gonna be called applications and we're just gonna leave everything alone and save that. And then we're gonna create another one. This one is called media and we're just gonna leave all that saved and then in applications. So we're gonna click on that one. We're gonna add another data set. And in here is going to be Plex. You can go all the way to the bottom, click save, leave everything alone. Perfect. Now that all of this is done, what we can do is go to apps and it's gonna ask what pool we wanna use for it. So we'll pick Galaxy, cause that's the one that we just made. We'll choose that one. One thing that we have to do before installing anything is we have to go up to settings. We have to go to the advanced settings and we have to go to this box right here that says enable host path safety checks. And we have to uncheck that. Now that change has been made, so we can go to available applications right here. We can find Plex and we can click install. Now we're going to scroll down until we get to networking. We're going to configure the host network and then on your router you're going to want to port forward 32400 so that way you can access it outside the network. Then for the transcode volume we're going to go to mount galaxy applications plex and we can just copy that directory because we're going to use the same thing for all of them. So we're going to go here and we're going to paste that in and that's for the data volume and then for the config volume we're going to do the exact same thing. So now all three of those are going to be saving in that applications folder and then right here plex extra host path volumes we want to add one. So the mount path in the pod we're going to want to do a forward slash and I'm just gonna call this one media um, and I'm gonna keep it a capital M just to distinguish the differences between them now we can go to mount galaxy and this one's going to be the media directory so this means that the media directory here or the the media data set is gonna be mounted as media within the pod for Plex now we can go down I'm gonna leave all of this alone and I'm just gonna click Save and now if we go to the installed applications you can see that Plex is there but before we do anything we're gonna to want to go to shares under Windows SMB shares we're gonna click add and we're going to add the media directory and I'm just gonna call this one Plex so that way it's uh, easily distinguishable on Windows since that's where the Plex media is gonna go now we can 
and click save. And we're gonna have to change the access control list. Now under the ACL, what we're gonna wanna do is go to the presets. We're gonna use a preset and we're gonna change this to open. And then we're gonna change the owner to apps. We're going to apply owner, apply group, and then we're manually going to add an item. And this is going to be a user. And this is going to be the user account that I just made, which is gonna have full access. And we're gonna add another item, which is going to be another user. And this one is going to be the apps. And again, read, write, and execute. Now we can save the permissions reclusively, confirm. We're also gonna apply permissions to child data sets. Uh, huh. Not like it really matters right now, mostly because there's nothing else in that data set. So it's updating the ACL and you can see that it didn't save correctly because the owner is still root. So if that happens, just edit and we can go to apps again apply owner, apply group, and we're just gonna save. So now you can see that media is owned by the apps, but the user account has access to them. Now in File Explorer, under Network, you can see that TrueNAS comes up, so we can just open that. And that's the Plex folder, which is the media directory that we have there, because if we go to Shares, you can see that Mount Galaxy Media is mounted as Plex. So that's this one here. Now in here, we can create a new folder. This one's gonna be called Movies, and we'll create another one called TV Shows. Now within Movies, uh, we can just put our very legally acquired movies. Now we can go to Apps, and we can start the web portal for Plex. So we can click here, got it. We're gonna ignore Plex Pass, uh, TrueNAS. We can call this uh, Galaxy, just so we know where it's coming from. Um, allow access from outside my home. Hit next on that one. Now we can add the library. So we'll hit movies, next, browse for media folders. And now here you can see that we have the capital M media folder that comes up. So we can click that one, click on movies, and you can see that it's already recognizing files within it because we've given access to that directory. So that's fine. Add, add library. We can do another one, TV shows, next, browse for media folder, click on media, TV shows, add. Add to library and hit next. Now we can hit done and there you go. So we can start and it just instantly starts playing. There's no buffer times or anything and this is running over the network because the server is in the other room. Uh, so that's, that's done there. Now for syncing new files, uh, you can see how many attempts this took. So we can go up to settings, we're gonna go to library and we're going to scan the library automatically. So that way, as soon as we add any movies or TV shows, it's automatically gonna scan and then they're just gonna come up. And we can scroll all the way down, save those changes. The changes have been saved. So we can go back over here on the server that we just made, go to library and let's add another movie. Now again, network, TrueNAS, uh, and for quick access, if you want, uh, you can just right click on this and you can map a network drive and that'll map the network drive to whatever letter you want. And then under this PC, there'll be another drive. So we can go here and go to movies. Uh, let's put another very legally acquired movie in here. And you can see that's copying over. And just like magic, Plex found the change and it automatically added it. And we still have access to the Samba. So we can just drag and drop as we want. Uh, Plex automatically recognizes these files. And because we set it up into its own specific directory for media, uh, we can also use this uh, for other apps and stuff. So uh, just for example sake here, let's go to data sets under the applications. Let's make a new data set and we can call this one Jellyfin. And just like before, we'll just save it. And now because we already have the permission so apps can access this. We don't have to do anything else. We can just go over to apps, available applications, and you just go right down here to Jellyfin. Now we can scroll down, enable the host network. Now for some reason, uh, this does not work correctly because it won't let us go to uh, anything less than 9,000, but the port is less than 9,000, so we'll just leave that alone, but we have to change that after. Um, this is uh, like a true NAS issue. Uh, now for the uh, config storage here, we're gonna go to a host path that already exists, mount, galaxy, 
applications and Jellyfin. Now we can just copy that and we're gonna do the same thing for the cache storage and the same thing for the transcode storage. Now for the additional storage, this is where we're gonna add our own host path. And again, just like before, mount galaxy media and the mount path is going to be media. So we basically set this up exactly the same way that we did with Plex. Then we're just going to click save, go all the way back up, click on installed applications, and you can see that it's deploying. So we're just going to give that a minute and we can click on the web portal, but it's not going to work because it's going to try and go to the wrong port. But if we just refresh the page, now you can see that it has the port 8096. So now if we go to the web portal and we change that to 8096, you can see that it comes up just fine. So we can hit next, uh, the username here, we'll just use the same as my computer, same password, hit next. We can add a media library, the content type, it's gonna be movies and the folder, we're gonna hit this little plus button and you can see right there, media. And now the movies will be right there and there they are. Now we can hit okay and we can hit next. It's gonna leave everything alone and finish. Now we can sign in and you can see that right away, the movies are already here. Click one, start playing and it just starts playing instantly. Now, these are obviously still loading, they'll come up after. Now back in File Explorer, uh, this Plex folder doesn't really make sense anymore, so we could remount that as something else, like media. Uh, but in here, super legally acquired video, and there it is. And this should update in a second. And there we go. That took a little bit longer than Plex, but it does update properly. So that's, uh, that's, that's about it. This works on uh, Jellyfin and Plex, and the Samba share is still working properly on Windows. Uh, now you can just drag and drop till your heart's content, and you can watch it on uh, whatever service that you want. Through countless hours of searching, approximately five hours of trying to figure this out, uh, I found tons of threads and posts all over Reddit and TrueNAS forms, uh, Plex forms, everything of uh, people just not being able to access their media or the media just not showing up or not automatically refreshing. So uh, that, that's it. Um, hopefully you found something useful here. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already or, you know, don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.